Hello, welcome to Daily Word and Prayer. This is day 291, the fourth day of the 42nd week of the year. Um, the fourth is the middle, the fourth day is the middle of the week. That's the midpoint. I like to call it the bridge, the bridge day in the week. It's the day that connects the three first three days of the week to the last three days of the week. And this is something very, very important that you don't want to miss this that there was no blessing. The last three days of the week are the blessing days. There was no blessing on the, from the first day to the fourth days, only on the fifth day that God began to bless. He blessed on the fifth day, blessed on the sixth day, and blessed on the seventh day. There's a reason for, for that, but it's just to say that these are this, the last three days of the week are the blessing days in the week. And uh, the fourth day is the bridge to the blessing days. So, so that tells us how significant uh, the fourth day of the week is. That is really the middle of the week because it is the bridge to the blessing side. The fourth season is a season of stretching for promotion. Your promotion is on their side. But there's some stretching. You know, many times people are inconvenienced in the fourth season because of something that lies ahead. There's some stretching that needs to happen. There are some tests. There are some, you know, there's, there's an examination that you need to pass to be able to cross to the other side. So that's what the fourth, you know, we see in the fourth, in the fourth season. So, we go to the fourth day of creation to see what God did there from Genesis chapter 1, verse 19, verse 14 to verse 19. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the, the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light, that's the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, the night, to rule the night. He made the stars also, one sun, one moon, and many stars. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide, to give light, to rule, to divide, and to be for seasons, and to divide <coughs> the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So why will God make lights on the fourth day? Why will God make lights on the fourth day? because it's a day of critical decision. The lights that he made on the fourth day are guiding lights, guiding lights. Before I even talk about the guiding lights, I want you to see, you know, why, you know, the, 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 the experiences that people have in fourth seasons is because spiritually the fourth day, the fourth week, the fourth year, the fourth season is a spiritual hot season. Remember that heat began on the fourth day when God made the sun and the moon. The sun heats up. So heat was born on the fourth day. So many times the, the inconvenience, the pressures we feel in fourth seasons is just, to, is just an expression of what the season is carrying. There's a reason for it. The heat of the fourth day is for stretching, is for expansion, is God is putting capacity. God is building capacity. In the fourth book of the Bible, um, God began to speak to Moses about taking a census of the children of Israel, those who could go to war, the men who could go to war. He said, take a census of them because in the fourth season, you are supposed to think like a soldier. You are supposed to think like someone at war. 
So the training, the things that God does in your life is to build you up, to give you capacity for the days ahead or for the rest of the week. If we're considering the fourth day of the week, for the rest of the week, God wants to build capacity for the rest of the week. So the guiding lights are supposed to guide you to make the decisions, to make the steps so you don't make mistakes. You need light. Light is necessary because of darkness. In the fourth season, the enemy wants to, the enemy attacks with mental darkness so that people don't think wisely. People don't do the things they are supposed to do. Why will Cain kill his brother in Genesis chapter 4? Why will Moses, after encountering God and seeing all the, heard the voice of God now say, I don't want to go, I'm not going, I cannot speak and all that. Why will he abandon that? Persecution rose in the early church in the fourth chapter of Acts. The adversaries of Judah attacked in the fourth chapter of Ezra and the fourth chapter of, of Nehemiah. Majority of those who came out of Egypt in the second book of the Bible did not make it past or through the fourth book. They perished in the wilderness. So the fourth is a, is a, is a trying time and when God equips us for the day ahead, for the future. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. As they were going to the other side, a storm rose against them. A storm rose against them. A storm. A storm rose against them. So in the fourth season, <clears throat> you see the storm, you see the pressure, you see, you know, the trouble, but you are not to be, you are not to be stopped by any of those things. Israel stopped her journey in the fourth book of the Bible because they saw the giants. But Caleb and Joshua said, no, 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 we're able to go. So banish fear from your heart. This fourth day, don't allow anything to stop you because you're on a journey to the other side of the week, the blessing side of the week. The enemy doesn't want you to get there, but you will get there. So you need to, um, need to prepare your heart as you step into that season. We're going to look at the, the fourth division, the fourth division of the book of Luke, that's from chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, let's see what the Lord has for us there. Luke chapter 13. <clears throat> In Luke chapter 13, Jesus gave some parables, the parable of the barren fig tree. He will, you will have a combination of healing and teaching. Jesus will do a work of power. He will also give guidance. As the light of the world, he will dominate darkness, but he will also enlighten the minds of the people. So light works two ways, you know, to subdue darkness, but also to enlighten, enlighten. So we're going to be seeing the two, Jesus enlightening his people to, <clears throat> To, to affect their minds by teaching, but also to subdue the works of darkness, or subdue darkness and deliver those who are held by darkness. So Jesus told the parable of the barren tree, told the parable of the barren tree, and he also delivered a woman who had the spirit of infirmity, this woman who was bent, and Jesus said to her, woman, you are healed. Jesus tells also the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of leaven, and Jesus spoke about the narrow way in um, Luke chapter 13. Um, so, so there's a lot of preparation, a lot of preparation to teach the people. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. So Jesus gave time to do this teaching. You remember, remember the fourth is a place of preparation. 
if you remember what we read in Luke when we were reading the 41st week, I mean, yeah, the 41st week in Mark chapter 4, Jesus also gave parables, gave parables. So the fourth season is for preparation for what lies ahead. So that's in chapter, in chapter 14, Jesus healed a man uh, who had dropsy on the Sabbath. And then also he began to teach, teach people about the wisdom of taking the lowly place until you are recognized. He talked about the parable of the great supper uh, in this chapter and um, leaving all to follow Jesus Christ, a true cost of discipleship. So in this fourth division, Jesus walked in two ways as light. He will enlighten the mind through teaching. He will also subdue darkness through works of power. And then, <clears throat> now he told the parable of the soul, I mean, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of lost things. In the, the parable of lost things in, in Luke chapter 15, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost child. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost child. That's the principle of recovering what was lost. That in this week of receiving answers, we don't give up. When we lose things, we go make effort to recover what uh, is lost. So that's the attitude. Now, we, we know well, in the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus talked about how, this, uh, how the shepherd will leave 99 sheep to go after that one that is lost. So that one of the things that ushers us into the season of blessing is paying attention. You don't want to lose anything. In my part of Africa, in my part of uh, Nigeria, we say that nobody becomes a rich man by throwing away what you have gained. You don't become rich by get and throw away. <laughs> the way we say it. You don't become rich by get and throw away. So you, what you lose, you look for them to see that you recover them. Recover lost grounds, recover lost relationships, recover the lost. That's part of how to prepare yourself for the other side. So Jesus told um, this parable. How did he tell the parable? He said, then all class collectors and the sinners drew near to him to, bear, to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke the parable of the lost coin. So you don't despise anything this week, especially this day. Don't despise anything. Don't despise the little coin that is lost. Don't despise lost souls. Don't despise sinners. Go for them and win them back to the Lord. So that's the lesson that we find. So Jesus uses fought, this fought. Uh, the fourth division of the book of Luke to teach some things that can affect the mindset of people and also do works of power. So that's what we must uh, take in as we step into the fourth day of the 42nd week. In this week of answers to prayer, don't despise anything. Don't be careless about anything. Don't, even when you when you are losing, when you have lost certain things, don't just fold your hands and say, well, after all, it's just one out of 99. No, 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 no. Go for what is lost and recover it. And I pray that the Lord will give you recovery strength, that the Lord will enable you to, to move in, to recover what is lost, that you do not, you are not careless about the blessings of God. You are not careless about the things that God has given to you. You are you are focused and you are not about losing what God has given to you, but instead increasing what has given to you. So I pray that this will be a day of the recovery of the things that we have lost. I will find them and will bring them back into the fold in the mighty name of Jesus. As Jesus told the parable of the lost son, and when the son came back, the, the elder brother was angry at the lavish, the way the father, the lavish reception that the prodigal son received, and Jesus used that also to teach. 
don't despise sinners. The end lesson is that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Don't despise anyone. God does not despise anyone. I pray that the Lord will give you this wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus, that this will be your day of recovering what was lost in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be poor at this today, but you will be richer because what was lost, you will get it back. And what you have, you will not lose in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.